Hey guys, my name is Emma and today I've got a mini graphic novel haul as well as a tour of my graphic novel collection for you. So we're going to jump straight in with the haul. These all turned up at the same time. I actually ordered them at the very beginning of November but I was waiting for one of them to come in stock. One of them I've read before and the others I haven't. Graphic novel number one is Alias which is Jessica Jones volume one. So the author is Brian Bendis, the artist is Michael Gados and the colourist is Matt Hollingsworth. I'm going to try and remember to do that for all of them. So this is the graphic novel series that the Netflix TV show Jessica Jones was based off of. It's a four volume series and it's basically Jessica Jones after she attempted to be a superhero and is now a PI just like the Netflix series. This is a Marvel one. I prob There's a, an overabundance of Marvel down here. I am a Marvel girl and I'm really keen to get to this one fairly soon because I know very little about Jessica Jones outside of the TV show. Okay I picked up volume three and four of Revival. I read volume one and two which you are going to see in a second early on back in October. This is by Tim Seeley and the artwork is by Mike Norton I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, I think so. This is a rural noir set in a small town in Wisconsin where the dead come back to life. Now they aren't zombies as far as I can tell, but the idea is that it's just the townsfolk trying to deal with the ramifications of this and then the ripple effects to sort of America and the world as a whole. Volume 1 and 2 were really really cool, but there were a lot of characters and a lot of threads, so I'm super keen to jump in for 3 and 4 to see whether we can kind of smooth this out a little bit in my head as to what's going on. These are from Image by the way. Uh, another one from Image is I Hate Fairyland by Scotty Young and it is coloured by Jean-Francois Bullio. Uh, it's written and drawn by Scotty Young. I saw this first on Jean Bookish Thoughts' channel but it has been popping up on quite a few and the idea is it's a young girl who falls through some kind of wormhole type thing and ends up in fairyland but then she's trapped there and the story actually picks up when she's a 30 year old still trapped in that young girl's body. It's both a combination of cute and whimsical but also really gory and like she wants to try and swear but she can't and she's just desperate to get back home and no longer be trapped in such a cutesy world. It sounds really cool and I'm really looking forward to it. I am trying to branch into the DC world and the first place that I'm going to go is the Teen Titans. So this is the DC Universe Rebirth Teen Titans Volume 1 Damien Knows Best. There are quite a few different Teen Titans out there. This has got some of the lineup that I best know from the cartoon series that I watched as a kid which has obviously got your boy Robin, there's Beast Boy, oh there's Young Flash, I don't know him, Stargirl and my personal favourite Raven. This was written by Benjamin Percy and the pencillers, there's a whole bunch in there and a whole bunch of colourists, it's a very much a group one. Again I think this is a four parter so I'm kind of keen to see where this one goes and it is recommended that if you are trying to get started with the Teen Titans this is a good place to start. And then the one that I have actually read before is The Winter Soldier The Complete Collection, this is the Brubaker edition, Ed Brubaker who is who is one of the biggest writers when it comes to Captain America and Winter Soldier that I am personally aware of the bits of him that I have read. Uh, I had all of these in original comic form but a flood a couple of years ago wiped out them as well as two thirds of my comic book and graphic novel collection which is why I stopped collecting them for a while. I personally adore this whole storyline. It really dives into the Winter Soldier's background as well as his relationship with Black Widow and their history when they were with the KGB together and it is wonderful. It also has a gorilla shooting a machine gun at one point. Yeah, that's badass. I have read it already but I really want to read it again because it has been about three years. Now I'm just going to roll through my collection in general that I have for you. I thought about doing like the classic bookshelf tour but they're all super down below because they need one of my bigger shelves and so it was really cramped and impossible to see so I'm just going to hold them up. I've got a huge collection of Captain Americas specifically looking at the Ed Brubaker story which is where you get the classic Winter Soldier reintroduction, that iconic scene of who the hell is Bucky that you see in the Marvel movie and I'm going to try and get them in the right order now for you. I should have done this before camera. So these are all mainly written by Ed Brubaker but there were some other guest writers in between. Oh, sorry, fixed my camera. And I've read most of these. So we start off with Captain America Winter Soldier, which is the iconic one, like I said, which the movie is based off of, which has that beautiful who the hell is Bucky scene absolutely brilliant. The story continues with Captain America The Red Menace. These are all ultimate collections and kind of various wrap-ups and things like that. I think this was a series in the very early 2000s, maybe late 90s, but I could be wrong. My timeline for Captain America isn't brilliant just because there's so many of them. We continue the story again with the absolutely mind-blowing death of Captain America and yes the title is a little bit of a spoiler. Good old Cap does indeed take the bullet and die. Super dramatic. These, This whole storyline is also 
awesome because you get to see things like Falcon, Sharon Carter really has much more of a kind of growth and development. You get to see some flashbacks with um, with Peggy Carter and all of the history and it is the whole Hydra taking on the shield and it's just wonderful. If all of that was to gobbledygook, completely ignore me. Then is where I actually had to stop with the collection because the next one you can't find in print form anymore without it costing you an arm and a leg. It's the man with two faces and it's where I can't remember, like I don't know which one of the characters but somebody takes on the mantle of Captain America continues. Now because you can't buy it in physical form other than unbelievably pricey because they just have stopped printing it and it's now become kind of a rare collector's idea, I just haven't got around to, to looking at it. There are various e-versions of it but I don't currently have a membership to any of those platforms and it's something that I am keen to do but it just breaks my heart a little bit that I don't have it in the main collection. Now before I realised this I did buy just a bundle of Captain America so I actually have the next two books in the series which is Captain America Road to Reborn and Captain America Two Americas which continue the story and I've not read them yet because I haven't read The Man With Two Faces so I really need to just like suck it up get myself a what is it like Cox Cosmicology? membership that's like an ebook but for comic books i'll link it down below their website i don't know any information i'm not a member right now this is not sponsored i know nothing they could be rubbish but it is a place where you can read them and i know that they do have the mama two faces so i just need to like read that so that i can get to these two because i love this entire storyline I am kind of tempted to go back to the beginning and reread that entire saga because one, it's flipping awesome, but also I can't remember half the stuff that happened. So it would be really good <laughs> to do that before taking on the Man With Two Faces because I think I spend the entire time going, huh? So yes, it would be good to, to recap. Continuing on my Marvel superhero sort of back catalogue that I have, I do have Civil War, which is one of those iconic across universe events that the Marvel Universe has had. This again has been made into a movie, but the Marvel Cinematic Universe, as far as I'm concerned, really screwed the pooch on that one. This is so much cooler and so much better. This is just the generic Civil War bind up. There are specific ones related to different characters, depending on who you read. This is the general one that gives you the overarching theme, and then there are spin offs as to what happens. And basically, similar in some ways to the movie, the idea is that they want to have some regulations on what the superheroes can and can't do but it's more because there are so many of them and this comes because of two young teens two or three young teens who have some supernatural abilities who are attempting to play at superheroes and in doing so screw up lose control of their powers and blow up a block that includes a school super intense super emotional and this is a really interesting discussion about what governments can do how much control people can have how much culpability people can have um, you know the whether they justify the means utilitarian ideas of philosophy it really goes goes into way more detail than the movie which as far as I'm concerned was just oh I love Bucky oh Bucky is bad I'm gonna punch Iron Man and I'm the king you tell I'm like a I hate that movie so I would really recommend if you're vaguely into the Marvel Cinematic Universe at all this might be a good place to start because it's really really cool written by Mark Miller and Steve McNiven so many of these bind ups have got so many writers and colorists and drawers on them I'm really struggling to like give credit where credit is due so I'm so sorry but otherwise we'd just be listing names till the end of time. The other characters who I really like to collect are Black Widow and Hawkeye so I'm going to run through my collection of those. Now one of the major victims in the flood as well as my Winter Soldier collection which broke my freaking heart was also my Black Widow collection specifically the Phil Noto series. So I've got number nine number 10 here these are the only two that survived and i had a good 16 or 17 of these bad boys i do want to buy the bind up at some point because it's an awesome story the artwork is gorgeous it's really like sketchy um and more kind of watercolory and really dark uh, i don't know how well you can see on camera because it's a little bit shiny um it kind of flies in the face a little bit of your bright pow zap kind of comic books and they are really wonderful to go into a little bit more detail about um black widow's background um it's one that again i'd love to reread because i have forgotten most of it and honestly i'm kind of thinking about just sticking with graphic novels from this point on because i do find that comic books are very short and i have a tendency to forget what's come before and i really like to just binge for a little bit longer continuing with my black widow trend i've also got black widow the name of the rose this is a story with iron man and Hawkeye and it's basically looking at going back through Black Widow's past because there's somebody out to get her. There's guest appearances from Hercules and Wolverine. It's freaking awesome. Totally go read it if you like her. My final Black Widow one is Black Widow Deadly Origin which is, um, I don't even really remember what this one is about. Maybe this is the one with Hercules in it. 
this is the problem with them is when they're quite short and they cover like lots of different origins is you do slightly lose track so maybe i just need to go back and reread all of them that could be cool, I could spend an entire day just binging comic books. Hawkeye, I've got Hawkeye Blindspot, which really goes into the origins of the character, and he actually grew up in the circus, which is somebody who has worked in circuses before. I have a real soft spot for his story. He also, so Hawkeye is deaf, which is something that isn't covered in the movies, which it totally should be, because it's awesome representation. And in this one, he goes blind as well, which is like super dramatic, and it's a really interesting look at how he deals with that, and how he can still keep his powers. I have a Totally Wicked series from like the late 80s or so, so, which is a uh, four comics which is um, Hawkeye in his crazy purple suit he meets a weird dog type thing and they go on crazy adventures this is super fun I don't think you can get this in a bind up anymore I bought it off of eBay it's crazy cheap and they're awesome and then my non superhero comic books which have been seen on this program channel before because you saw them in Spookathon is Revival Volume 1 and 2 which I talked about earlier and also Lock and Key Volume 1 and 2 this is by Joe Hill and is a really freaky story about a house which has different keys that can have different powers there's a family who have a really tragic backstory it's kind of linking back to their father and things that happened with the previous generation it's quirky and gruesome and freaky and the characters are wonderful and I absolutely love it totally want to buy Volumes 3 and 4 and 5 and 6 and just finish this as soon as I can. So that's it from me. Have a wonderful week. What gra graphic novels do you like? Do you read them? Just everything in the comments down below and I'll chat to you soon. Bye!